Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk you through about how to create an entryway when you don't have one. So I love grand entryways, I love that kind of burst of design and your interior style the minute you walk through a door. I'll insert some of my favourite images of interiors and entryways that I absolutely obsessed over. However, there are times, like in the home that we're in now, where there isn't that carved out entry space. In our traditional Victorian terrace, it's a two up two down, which means there's two rooms on each floor. So our front door opens up immediately into our living room. That hasn't stopped me though creating an entryway of some sort. It may not be the grand entryway of dreams, but it serves its purpose of being that space when you come through the door, that welcoming hub of where you greet guests and taking parcels and everything like that. There are a couple of things that you can do to create that look, and I'm gonna talk you through my top five tips on creating an entryway when you don't have one. So my first tip is that you've got to define your entryway space with furniture. So as I said, when you open our front door, you immediately come into our living room. So I had to really define what was the living room space and what was the entryway. With our front door being directly opposite our stairs, it made sense to create this narrow, long, rectangular space that this was our entryway. How to separate that from the living room space? Quite simply, I used our sofa. So the back of the sofa is right here and it just kind of gives that mental block of this is one space, this is another space. Ideally, I would prefer to block off with a console table of some sort, like sofa and then console table. I love that look in homes, I think it's really, really gorgeous. However, as you can imagine, the space that we have between the two things, if I've got console table and then the sofa, I'm either cutting off the entryway massively or I am reducing the space in our living room. So went with the sofa option. I put this gorgeous fro just to break up the color and kind of create that look and just add a bit of interest to the back of the sofa because back of the sofas aren't always the prettiest thing. So I'd say if you have got that kind of space in your home, it either create like a physical barrier with like I say console table, your sofa, even a room divider. If you've got enough room where you can sort of create an even taller barrier between you and that other space that you are trying to separate, room barriers are a great way, really decorative piece that can do that for you. And with my next tip, we're moving back to the console table, which is to include one in your space. Now, as I said, it wasn't possible for us to put it behind the sofa, but the way we did it was we put it on this side of the wall. Now, it's not a traditional console table. With the radiator that we have right here, I wasn't able to find a piece that would allow me for the door to open and have a space to put stuff. So our console table is a radiator cover. Make do with what you've got, guys. But it is effective in what it does, in which it hides the radiator but it also creates a flat surface for us to decorate upon. But it also anchors the space, it really draws your eye to this is the console table and this has all my bits and bobs that you would find in an entryway. It's the central point where all my other design elements come off. Some great places to get console tables are La Redoute, absolutely love that place of furniture. Maison de Mont have some gorgeous pieces that I would love to include in my home. Vintage, I cannot recommend Facebook Marketplace enough for finding really gorgeous long narrow tables that that will add character and charm to your space. My next tip is to hang a mirror or artwork in the space. Now, ideally, I would always say mirror because naturally when you are separating room, you're gonna make that space seem smaller. A mirror is a great way to bounce light, to confuse the eye and make it look like the space is 10 times larger than it actually is. With us having a big mirror directly opposite the entryway on our fireplace, I didn't want to do too many juxtapositions with mirrors. So what I did, was went with artwork in our entryway. I got these two big, large portrait photo frames and put some gorgeous artwork in there. Now, I would say with entryways, always go with artwork rather than personal photographs. I don't know about anyone else, but I don't like the idea of opening my front door and somebody stood on the street can immediately see how many members of the house there is just without even entering. I feel like personal photography 
is much more for the rest of the room, the more intimate areas when you're inviting guests in. Some great places to get artwork from, I've spoken about many a time, Decenio, Etsy, French Home Lemon, one of my favourite places to go. Just any of those places where you can get unique design pieces that will really speak to your interior style. With artwork, go is go large. The bigger, the better. It's a real design faux pas when you see such a tiny piece of artwork on a wall that's not even like in the center or at the right height or anything like that. Go as large as you physically can, fill up that space, make that wall seem taller than it is, your room seem bigger. It's all about playing, you know, tricks with the eyes, making things seem the illusion, you know, that your house is much bigger than it actually is. My next tip is to use a runner. A runner, rugs, anything like that, flooring covering, is a great piece for separating the areas of your space, especially if you've got these multi-living places, like especially like a big family room. A rug to separate what is the living room from the dining room from the kitchen. It's just a simple piece that will do all the hard work for you. The entryway is no exception. You really want that piece that is going to say, this is the entryway and this is the space that we are in. Now, I don't have a rug just yet in this space. I still haven't found the right piece yet, but that is all gonna come with the living room makeover. I've got some plans to change everything up here in the entryway, and the runner is gonna be part of that. Runner-wise, again, Laradu is a great place to get runner from, you know, Etsy, anything vintage, so go thrift shopping, go antique shopping, go to your, you know, your thrift stores, find those unique pieces. You want a rug that is quite tightly woven because it's gonna be in a high traffic area. You don't want anything soft that's just gonna absorb that dirt and never let it go. You want something that's gonna be easy to clean, easy to sweep, dust off all those bits and bobs when people are coming through the door. My final tip for decorating an entryway when you don't have one is to actually decorate it. You've got the pieces in place, now put those finishing touches and let that space come to light. The top things I would advise to put in your entryway is some form of scent. Absolutely love a fragrance that when your guests come through they immediately know what your home is all about. I personally go for fresh florals. I've got like a sea salt diffuser in our entryway, that kind of fresh brightness really speaks to what our home is all about before they've even taken a step into the space. I'd also say diffusers over candles, uh, though that the entryway is a used area, it's not a space that people spend a lot of time in, so you don't want to be lighting a candle and forgetting about it. Diffuser is a great minimal way of getting that scent in and allowing you to forget about it until it runs out. Other things to consider is a catch tray or a trinket tray or a little dish. So when you come in somewhere to throw your keys into, you could throw them on the side but if you keep doing that you're just going to end up with junk and that console table that beautiful console table that you invested in is going to become a dumping ground so get yourself some form of tray some form of trinket place where you could dump those bits like your keys everything like that into it disguises them it organizes them it's exactly what you want in an entryway and then my final thing that i recommend to decorate your entry with is some faux florals i love a faux floral in any part of a home but i love them in an entryway because again like i said high traffic area but an area you don't spend a lot of time in so you really don't want to be investing in like expensive plants or flowers that are just going to die because you've easily forgotten about them because you spend much more time in other spaces of your room. Even in a space like this where the entry is part of my living room I very rarely spend time in this specific square footage space of my home. So faux florals are a great way to do that. I have these gorgeous magnolia branches very seasonal with this time. I do swap them out with seasons so expect some reds and oranges come autumn and of course something very foresty green come Christmas time. They just do the job, they look amazing, they look so real. It's only when you get up close and personal that you realise that they are fake. Such good quality, that little touch that just elevates this little space. Great places to get faux florals from are Hudson Home. I absolutely recommend them to anybody that will listen to me. You know, worth the investment, worth spending those extra pennies on. Neptune is another great place for faux florals. And that is it for this 
video. I hope this inspires you. I hope if you had that kind of stuck or you want to create that little entryway space but you don't exactly have the actual physical room dedicated just to that, I hope this video has inspired you that you can create it regardless of the layout of your home. Do let me know in the comments below which tip you're going to take into your home. Like this video if you found it very useful and you want to recommend it to other people that might be in a similar design situation. Do follow me for all the DIY interior videos that you can possibly imagine. I have so many great videos coming up and a room makeover coming very, very soon that I know you're not going to want to miss out on. And yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.